Hi, this is Nick Roush with Flipping Wall Street. And today we're going to cover a topic that many folks have asked us about. And I wanted to put together a presentation that anybody can watch that can kind of lay out what a roadmap to a $1 million portfolio would look like. So we get that question all the time, and that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to show you how long it takes to save, what you need to save, um, how to set some goals, what returns on investment would look like, how many years it's going to take. Those types of things we're going to discuss in this presentation today. So today... I want to first go over this disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. Uh, everything that we share with you today, uh, if you are interested in what we're sharing, you should discuss it with your investment advisor uh, and your CPA to ensure that it's suitable for your investment profile. And nothing that we share with you today should be construed as investment advice. So please read through that and we'll go ahead and get started. So first we want to start off with saving and investing. If saving money and investing is so critically important to our future, why don't we learn from our parents? Well, frankly, most parents don't know how to do this themselves. So it's hard for them to teach their children when they've never been taught themselves how to do this. So start saving as soon as we can work. The second point. So no, if nobody tells us that we should be taking a percentage of what we're earning at a very young age and sock it away, uh, you know, nobody's going to do it. So the third point is, why aren't we exposed to this in high school? That's an interesting one as well. I actually know a lot of teachers, and a lot of teachers are actually really good with their money, and they're very good at saving. And uh, it's interesting that it's not built into the curriculum to teach kids how to save and be smart with their money so that when they get older, they can retire with a million-dollar portfolio. So why isn't it mandatory in college? That's, that's, that baffles me. If you're going to spend 25000 on college all the way up to $200,000 on an education, why wouldn't they throw in a couple of semesters to ensure that you understand clearly the principles necessary and the roadmap necessary to achieve at least a million-dollar portfolio over your lifetime as a working an adult working adult so the last one is why doesn't the government support encourage and help with financial literacy you think it would be in the government's best interest with the uh, social security currently on target to um, be out of money by 2034 you think that it would be in our best interest as a society to give people the tools so that they don't need to depend on Social Security and other government programs in their golden years. All right, so saving and investing. What we're going to teach you today, anyone can do. You don't need a finance degree or an investment advisor. However, most industry professionals can't offer you this methodology. The old way of investing has a fundamental flaw. The presentation will help you free your investments to work harder for you so you can make the best use of your most precious resource, your time. Okay, let's take a look at what it takes to reach a $1 million goal for retirement. So let's look at saving $500 a month. So if we just save $500 a month and we don't invest it, we're looking at 166 years to be able to save a million dollars. Well, that's not going to work out so good. $750 would be $111. $1,000 would be 83.3. And $1,500 a month would be 55 years from just saving a loan. So the purpose of showing this column to you is for you to understand how critically important it is to get your money working for you in some capacity. So let's go ahead and look at if we get a 5% return on our money over time. Then we're looking at 45 years, 38 years, 33 years, or 27.2 years. So if you're putting away $1,500 a month and you're 40 years old, then really you're looking at having 
a uh, million dollars by the time you're 67. So 10% return on investment, 30 years. 750 a month, you're looking at 26 years. $1,000 a month, you're looking at 23 years. So if you're putting $1,000 a month away and you're 40 years old, you could have a million dollar portfolio by the time you're 63. Or if you're 50 years old, you're really looking at by the time you're 73, which we're all living longer, so that's a possibility. 1500 a month, you're looking at 19. So you can see by getting a return on your money over time, you can see how that really shortens the curve and makes that number much more attainable. And one of the things that we're going to talk to you about, about flipping Wall Street, is we can actually teach you how to earn an extra $1,500 a month that can help you achieve your goal uh, over time. So we'll talk about that a little later, but uh, that's really you know, what it's going to take to get you to a million dollars. So today our goal is to give you this education, this information, and then in our another presentation, we're going to show you how you can earn an extra $1,500 a month, which will get you on this track. So let's go ahead and move forward here. And we're going to talk about investment basics, and we're going to give you an overview. Um, and these are the things that we're going to cover today. So we're going to talk about setting a reasonable goal, we're going to look at a reasonable horizon. We're going to introduce you. Uh, we're going to introduce to you risk management and some concepts. We're going to talk to you about a systematic approach, which is going to help you manage your risk. And then we're going to talk about a simple benchmark strategy. We're going to share a strategy with you that's just four or five basic rules that you can follow that should give you a much smoother experience in the market over time. So we're going to give you the tools today to be able to save and grow a million dollar portfolio. Once we give you the information, the rest is up to you, but we want to make sure that you have the information. We give this away. This is not something that we charge for because we feel that it's so important that everyone has this information. Okay, so let's discuss a reasonable goal. A goal is to make money with acceptable risk. So let's look Let's look at history to help set expectations. According to historical records, the average annual return for the S&P 500 since its inception in 1928 is approximately 10% per year. So the stock market going back to 1928 has historically been a good place to be. Now there are periods of time where the market goes down significantly. There are parts, there are periods of time up to 20 years where the market basically goes sideways. And there are periods of time where the market just seems to go up and up and up. So when you adjust that number for inflation, it's about 7%. So participating in the market, and it doesn't matter what investments you're, you're interested in, we're just talking about the market today, the market gen in general has done about a 10% average over that long period of time. So let's go ahead and look at a reasonable time horizon. So because the markets go up and the markets go down, a reasonable horizon must be at least three to five years. So understanding market volatility will assure that at some point in time, you'll experience what we call a drawdown. So a trough to peak can last five years or more. So just think about the tech bubble crash in 2000. Think about the most recent crash in 2008 when we had the financial crisis. And it took about five years for things to get back to where they were previously. So that's what we talk about um, in regards to a time horizon and uh, volatility. So let's go ahead and talk about risk management. So risk management is something that should be critical and paramount to any investment strategy. So let's look at the definition first. Risk management occurs anytime an investor 
analyzes and attempts to quantify the potential for losses in an investment and then takes the appropriate action or inaction given his investment objectives and risk tolerance. So what what does that mean? So must make risk central in any investment plan. And it doesn't matter what you're investing in, you got to look at the risk involved. So you must identify your tolerance. So what is your risk tolerance? Is your risk tolerance 10%? Is it 20%? Is it 30%? What is your risk tolerance? Must be willing to be out of the market. So if your risk tolerance is 10%, let's say, that means once you hit that, uh, that mark, you got to be out of the market. So must follow the plan, the rules, when they appear to be wrong. So if you set your risk tolerance at 20%, then you just got to be out and you go back to the sidelines and then you just wait and figure out another plan to follow. But that's what risk management is and that should be paramount to any, um, <clears throat> any investment plan. So next, is there a way to quantify the risk uh, in any investment. And what we use is something that's called the Sharpe Ratio. I'm going to teach you something today if you're not familiar with it. So the Sharpe is your risk-adjusted return. So if you have a Sharpe of 1, what that means is that you're risking a dollar to make a dollar. If you find an investment that has a sharp of two, that means that you're risking a dollar to make two dollars. Now, average in the stock market over time, the the average sharp ratio is 0.33. So that means that you're risking a dollar to make 33 cents. So when you're evaluating a stock and a trading system or a methodology, it's good to look at the sharp ratio to determine if your risk level is acceptable. And uh, there is software now that can help you with that. And we'll talk to you about that in a little bit. So next is a systematic approach to participating in the market. So a trading system is simply a group of specific rules or parameters that determine entry and exit points for a given equity. These points, known as signals, are often marked on a chart in real time and prompt the immediate execution of a trade. So let's uh, take a look at that. So in a systematic approach to trading, there's, there's, there's two ways to participate in the market. Put your money in the market and just forget about it. Or take a systematic approach where you're following some rules. Now, why would you want to follow some rules? Because you're interested in managing your risk. So rules are essential to adhere to when you're taking a systematic approach. So markets inherently create fear. So when a market's going down and you're watching the television, the television is making you feel like the world is coming to an end. So fear is inherently created. When you see that market going down, you get scared and you, you act on it. If you have rules that you're following, then you just follow the rules and you do, you do what you need to do. So markets also create greed. So if you have a stock that's going up and up and up and up and up, then you get attached to that stock and you made a really good decision. But, you know, if you're following a system and you set a profit goal, for example, then you have to take the profit. So during fears, during times of fear, you must delever, mean go, mean go back to cash and go flat. During times of greed, you must also delever. You got to take your profits and get out of the trade. So that's what a systematic approach is. So what I'd like to show you now is I'm going to show you four basic rules that anyone can follow, which are designed to help you participate in a market going up and then get you out and back to cash when a market rolls over and starts going down. So let's just talk about that real quick. So this systematic approach, this example I'm going to give you is on the SPY, which is the S&P 500 index. So it's an ETF for the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest U.S. stocks, or 500 
largest US companies. So let's take a look at these basic rules that anyone can follow. And I'm just going to go through them with you right now. So buy the SPY when it's one standard deviation above the 200 day moving average. So if you don't know what a standard deviation is, there is software that can help calculate that for you. Um, but let's just look at the rules first and then I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. So when the SPY is two standard deviations above the 200 day moving average, get out. So when the SPY pulls back to within one standard deviation of the 200 day moving average, get back in. When the SPY has two consecutive closes below the 200 day moving average, get out. So what does that mean? So if the market starts going down, it rolls over, it's below the 200 day moving average, just close your position and get out. If you just follow the rules, you can have a much more pleasant experience in the market over time. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you what that looks like and I can talk to you about software and different things that are available out there to help you figure that out. Uh, software can actually do that for you now. So example of a systematic approach. What we're going to look at here, uh, the following slides depict the market experience of two investors. Red is going to be the buy and hold investor, which everybody should be familiar with what that looks like. And the green is... Uh, somebody that's following those four rules that I just demonstrated for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first chart here. And what we have is the SPY, so that's the S&P 500. This is an ETF. And if we started in 1996, we had four years of up, 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 up. So during that period of time, you're feeling pretty good. Life is good, your money's growing, your investments are growing. And if you remember the end of the 1990s, it was a booming time. Every, everybody that had a good idea was able to raise money. And then ultimately what happened in 2000 is when that bubble burst, then all of a sudden it lost, we lost 50% of the value. And all that fear set in and people got very scared and a lot of companies lost all of their value, went completely out of business, um, and a lot of folks ended up closing out their portfolios and losing a lot of money. So you probably remember what that felt like when it was going up and then what it felt like when it was going down. Then what happened? 2002, 2003, things bottomed out and then started their march back up. So you can see ending October 31st, 2007, that's where we ended up. Now let's take a look at the green line, which is just a system using those four basic rules I just shared with you. So here the system got in right around December of 1997. And you can see that gradually it's going up over some time. And then you can see once the market started going down in uh, August of 2000, you can see what happened here this particular system, the green line following those four rules that I shared with you, got out and it went back to what we call flat. So you're in cash through this period of time. When the market is going down, 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 we're in cash, so we're not worried about it. Then what happens is when that rule becomes true again, when the 200 day, uh, <clears throat> When we're above the two, one standard deviation above the 200 day moving average, we get a signal to get back in. And then we follow that up and we're above the S&P 500. And this is our experience for the next uh, couple of years ending in 2007. Now let's take a look at the next one here. So what this depicts here is here's that same chart. So here's our journey up. Here's our journey down. Here's our journey back up, and then here we come with to 2008 and the housing crisis, and here's our journey back down. So down another 50%. So our portfolio goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. We call that the roller coaster. So now let's take a look at those four rules if we just would have used and followed those four rules that I showed you in the previous slide. This would have been your experience. So we go up. And then we go down a little bit and then we're back to cash. Then we go up again for a couple of years. 
Here you can see we're flat, but back in, we're up to here. And then you can see during the financial crisis, we lost about 8 or 9% right in here. And then we're flat back in cash. Now, if you're 50, 60 years old and you're in the market, how are you feeling if you're back in cash up here versus riding this all the way down and going through this experience down here? You're pretty pretty terrified if you rode this all the way down. Uh, so that is just following those rules. That's the value of a systematic approach versus buy and hold and just following that down. So this is what it looks like to July 2016. And you can see that systematic approach is actually doing better than the market in general, slightly. But where this is really going to make a big difference is uh, two things. One, you have a, a much smoother and much more predictable experience over time trading the SPY, the S&P 500. But the next time the market in general drops 50%, 60%, then you're going to be up here versus the market in general, which is going to fall back down to here at some point. I can't guarantee that's going to happen. The market could go up 50% more before it goes down. Nobody knows. But really, the information that I'm trying to share with you is this is these using these rules can give you a much smoother experience in the market um, over time versus having all of this, you know, volatility. So let's go ahead and talk about assessment. So when you're running and taking a systematic approach, you want to review your portfolio from time to time. You want to review your performance from time to time. You may need to make adjustments, taking individual stocks out, putting other stocks in. You want to pay attention to it, but you know, keep your eyes down the road and you know, keep focused on the goal of achieving that million dollars over time. So now let's go ahead and ask you a question and think about this. Can you do it yourself? I believe that you can, especially with the help of some software. You now have the roadmap, just follow the rules. So those rules that I shared you, I think I mentioned to you that there is software that can kind of help you with that. So meet Flip. I'm going to introduce you now to the financial learning and investment platform. So Flip is an automated investment manager. And a couple of things about Flip. It's easy to use and easy to understand. Anybody can work with it. My eight-year-old daughter set up a strategy uh, for simulating with the software. Uh, so anybody can set up a portfolio to manage $100,000. It's simple. It's all point and click. It comes with strategies that were developed by uh, investment managers, uh, portfolio managers on Wall Street who managed hundreds of millions of dollars. And the same risk management uh, systems or strategies uh, they've made available in our software for anybody to use. So if you have stocks that you like, you can put them into the software. And then what the software is going to do is it's going to tell you which trading systems or strategies work best to trade those stocks over time. So once you build a portfolio of stocks with systems that have risk management built into them, essentially what's going to happen is it's going to send you alerts, just like a news service. So if you are following a news service that tells you about Apple, for example, it, it would do that. So it would tell you, hey, these rules are true. You should consider buying Apple. And then when you look at that alert, it's going to tell you, you know, buy Apple 33 shares at this price. And you can decide what to do with that information, whether you want to ignore it or if you want to buy it. Then it'll tell you maybe three months later, you should sell Apple at this price because of these rules. And you can decide if you agree with that or don't agree with that. So it's a tool that can really, really help you. It calculates the, you know, all the math and the statistics uh, to help you make decisions over time in managing your own portfolio. Now, the software also can be fully automated if you work with an investment advisor 
the advisor can help you build a port of, uh, portfolio that's suitable and customized for your specific uh, circumstances and situation. But then everything is done for you. So you get a strategy and a portfolio that's suitable for your specific investment profile, and then the software does the rest. You can just check in, and you can see when it's buying and selling, and you can follow along as it does all the work for you. So that's our software. I hope that's helpful in talking to you today about a systematic approach and those four basic rules that can help you. I hope it was helpful to see what you would need to save uh, in order to achieve a million dollar portfolio over the next period of time. It is attainable. It is something you can do. And if you are interested in learning about how you can earn an extra $500, $1,000, or $1,500 a month by helping us share this message and share our software with others. Please talk to the person that referred this video to you, and uh, we'd love to help you join our community, and we'll all work together to achieve this goal of having a million-dollar portfolio. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk to you soon.